Okay, I must be getting old, but I think this is the third video of the Sweet 16 series. And this happens to be the 68 Custom Fleet Side. As you can see, it's seen better days, but it's all there. The tanu cover, the windows, and all the wheels and tires. And for some strange reason, I thought this was based off a of full-size pickup. Well, it turns out it was actually based off an El Camino, designed by Harry Bradley in 1964. Like most Hot Wheels red lines, the fleet side was available in a variety of colors, purple being one of the most common. However, there were some slight variations. An example would be some of the models actually had a portion of the base painted to match the body. It would either fall in the last quarter or the front end last quarter. Another variation was the rear end. There were three different variations available. Our casting happens to be the one in the middle. Hot Wheels would re-release the custom fleet side in 1970, except it would go by the name Sky Show Fleet Side. They replaced the Tanu cover with an orange ramp. You may have noticed I have not been using the bench vise much in the videos. I've been using this watch vise. It's just much more convenient and easy to use. These are available on Amazon. I'll have links below the video in the description to each of my Amazon pages for Canada, the UK, and US. I use a variety of different methods for drilling out the post. And a lot of the red lines, I will actually grind them out. But here, I'm going to take our 0 .050 bit. You can also use a 16th inch bit. And we're going to lightly drill into the post just to create a little bit of a concave. That will get us started as well as give us a centering point for our 3 8 inch bit. We've already completed that step, so now we can just pop the casting apart. Now I'm going to take my file and simply flatten out the post. Now I'm using my thumb as a guide there. Now we're going to use our center punch to get a starting point and go ahead and start drilling out the post. Now for the rear post, I'm going to use my little bushing so I don't go all the way through to the bed. That particular portion of the casting is very thin. It's going to be very easy to drill all the way through. You can see right here, we've got a little point where we almost went through. Let's go ahead and strip down that beautiful purple paint. Again, I am using aircraft stripper in this video like I did the last, but I'm also wearing a respirator. As you can see, as soon as it makes contact, it immediately starts stripping the paint. I ended up getting a new toy last week. It's this parts cleaner you see right here. I got it from Harbor Freight. It was about $80. I should have purchased one of these long ago. I do a lot of motorcycle builds and this would have been ideal. But the straw that actually broke the camel's back was my wife. I would sneak upstairs after I got done stripping them and clean them in the sink. Well, she didn't like that too well. Now I don't have to worry about it. And it saves time, which leaves me time for more builds. Unfortunately, that aircraft stripper does not get some of the little nooks and crannies, so we're using our dental pick and just cleaning up those tight, tight spaces. This casting is rough and I actually thought I might be able to get by with just wet sanding. So I tried that for five or 10 minutes with very minimal results. It does look better, but you can see it's still rough. I'm gonna end up doing a little bit of electroplating. Once you have the casting nice and clean with a degreaser, soap and water, degreaser, and then with some distilled water, we're gonna go ahead and dip it in our acid to etch it and then put it in our zinc solution. On this particular casting, I end up using the process two times, at 30 minutes each. In between each 30 minute session, I'll take some 4 aught steel wool and go over the body. And this leaves us with a pretty nice finish. As you can see here, much better than what we started with. I'm going to go one step further and use my micro mesh with water and wet sand. Although it won't be perfect, it will be better than new. These castings when new were very rough. A lot of the Spectra Flame you see today with the Redline Shop cars, these original Redlines were nowhere near that. 
we're going to take some of our mother's polish and just polish up the body. We could have just painted as is. It would have been closer to original, but we've already taken the additional steps to wet sand, so why not polish it as well? A quick look at the polished side versus the non-polished side. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the entire casting, except for the bed, because that will be covered up. Once all of the polishing is complete, I'll thoroughly clean the car with warm soapy water and degreaser. As you can see here, the electroplating is still present on the underside of the casting as well as the bed. Now remember, I mentioned cleaning the car. This is a very important step. We're going to take some mineral spirits and clean the car some more. This will show you that the car is not entirely clean. Look at all that dirt coming off. So do not skip this step. A lot of comments about using the Hot Wheels axle and wheel removal tool. Why don't I use it? I do from time to time, but as you can see here, this wheel is not coming off. Chances are, if I push any harder, I'm going to pull that little white bearing off. And I don't want to do that because they're hard to get. So typically, if they give me any trouble, I just go ahead and cut them off. And unfortunately, that's what I have to do here. Earlier this week, I did get lucky with the hot heap and didn't have to do that. I'm now going to move on to the axles. I'm sure there's several different ways to removing these. I always start with the Z side with the little bend in it. I pop it out of place and then I pull down in the back, making sure the other side is also out of the slot as I pull down. Once I have it pulled down and popped out of place, I can twist the opposite side or the right side and just simply pull it out of the slot or it can just fly across the room. That base is looking rough. I'm going to dip it into the acid solution. Now this is a 50-50 mix. 50% acid, which is like a garage floor cleaner, and 50% water. Now there's no set time on leaving this base in there. I typically leave it in there for about a minute, check it, put it in for another minute or so, check it, and so on. You can see it's already looking much better, but it can use a bit more cleaning. At the same time, we don't want to overdo it. Once we're done, We'll remove it from the acid, thoroughly dry it off, and then we will thoroughly clean it as well. After we've got it nice and clean, we're going to hit it with our wire wheel. This will just bring out the shine. And it looks almost new. Maybe even better. I'm not sure. It wasn't around when these red lines were released. Now time for paint. We're going to hit it with one very light coat, follow it up with a medium, and then the third and final coat is a wet coat. And overall it looks pretty good. Now you'll notice the roof does not look so hot and there's a reason for that. I need to paint it black so I didn't put a lot of attention into that. We're going to start masking off in order to paint that roof. Now originally this roof was black and I'm going to keep it black but I wanted to change it up just a teeny bit. I'm going to use some of this magic black from the Redline shop. It gives the roof somewhat a vinyl top appearance. I thought it would just make it a little bit different. On to the tedious task of removing all of that masking tape. Much to my surprise, there are no runs. I guess I better go out and play the lottery. Just using some enamel paint to paint the front grille as well as that rear portion that we showed you in the beginning of the video. Now to reinstalling those axles. I like to squeeze them together in roughly the middle of the axle and then simply push them forward and usually they'll just pop right into place. I'm going to install the reproduction wheels without the tool but I will use the tool to actually snug them up. Simply put them on the bearing and then once I get them on there I snug them down by pressing against that tool. And of course, we need to straighten some of those axles. I just gave the interior a good clean. I did not try to get those scratches out of the tanu cover. They were fairly deep, and I would have to sand too much. And a light polish on the windshield with some mother's polish and our buffing wheel. To the home stretch, reassembly. Now, this is somewhat of a balancing act, at least it was for me. You have to first install the tanu portion of the interior, and then you've got to slide the windshield underneath of that and snap it into place. I may be doing this wrong, but that's the only way I could get this assembly to go into place. 
Using a toothpick, we'll apply a little glue to the post, and then we will install our reproduction rivets. I like using the glue now versus the epoxy, just in case I ever need to take these apart. I don't have to re-drill them. I can just get a screwdriver and pop them out. With that, we are complete. I think overall I'm happy with this restoration, but there are a few things I don't care for. Number one, the vinyl top. I do like it, but there's one problem. The casting fell off the rotating stand and onto its top. And if you notice, right there, there's a little scuff. Maybe hard to see, but this magic black is very unforgiving. And I knew that. I've used it before. I also feel I should have spent a little more time on the actual windows. The windshield itself turned out great, but the back window has some scratches that I didn't notice because I was mainly focused on the windshield. Also, I do not like the black painted rear end. I do realize this is how it came originally. I just don't like it. I even follow the exact body lines they used. I think I may end up stripping it off and just painting the taillights red, calling it a day. Yes, it won't be a full restoration, but I think overall it would look better. Also, it's not a full restoration anyway. We have a vinyl top. I guess I need to remind myself of actually what I started with. It was in rough shape. I'm really glad that it was in rough shape because the video we did earlier this week, the cars were in excellent shape and it was almost a shame to actually even touch them, but we ended up doing so. I wish that I could say that all the upcoming cars were going to be in this kind of shape. Most of them are, but a few of them aren't. There is one thing I'm going to need to change. A lot of them are purple, green, and blue. So I am going to have to take some of them away from the original colors, just like we did with the Corvette. I'd like to take this time to thank my top patrons, which are Corbin Cole and Mark Kidd. And a big thanks to all the Patreon supporters, all the subscribers, and everyone that watches the videos. If you'd like to purchase any of the tools that I use in this video, be sure to check out the Amazon links. They're located below the video in the description. I have Amazon links for the UK, for Canada, and the US. One link will take you to all the tools that we use. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And as always, thanks for watching.